This segment sponsored by GBMC Healthcare. January is National Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Well, here to tell us more about the causes of cervical cancer and how to reduce your risk is Dr. Kimberly Levinson, Director of Johns Hopkins Gynecological Oncology at GBMC Hospital. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. So as a woman, I think this is something that we always hear about. We always talk about screenings and everything else, but what is cervical cancer? Yeah, so cervical cancer essentially is cancer that starts in the cervix, which mm -hmm. is the opening to the uterus. Okay. So essentially there's, you know, any cancer, we kind of label it by its origin. And uh -huh. so this is a cancer that begins in that area. Okay, so, so that is the cause, and I guess it starts right there, right? So what does cause it, though? Yeah, so about 99% of cervical cancers are actually caused by HPV, the human wow. papillomavirus. And so HPV is essentially a sexually transmitted disease, but it's not a sexually transmitted disease like we think of gonorrhea and chlamydia. Mm -hmm. It's actually kind of like the common cold. So most people get HPV and most people will actually clear HPV. But that is the cause of cervical cancer if that virus hangs out and stays around there. Okay, so how can you reduce your risk of developing cervical cancer then? Yeah, so there's basically two best ways to reduce the risk. Okay. The first is with primary prevention through HPV vaccination. Mm -hmm. So we all hear about vaccines for children and those kinds of things. That is the number one way to prevent these cancers. Um, once people have have attained this HPV virus or have acquired it, um, essentially we need to re rely on screening for cervical cancer. Okay. And so that is the pap smear and the HPV test that allow us to pick up these changes early on. Okay, and so how often should those screenings be performed? Because I think there's been some debate about get your pap smear every year, every night, yeah, how, how do you know when? Yeah, so it used to be every year, which is why people mm -hmm. kind of think about that, but screening patterns have changed and recommendations have changed. Okay. And that's based on our knowledge about the HPV virus, how it affects the cervix, and the natural history of cervical cancer and HPV virus. So now we know that if somebody tests negative, both on their pap smear and on HPV test that they can actually go for five years without wow. requiring another screen, which is great. The little thing that we have to remember though is if both of those tests are not negative, then those screening guidelines may change and people may require further follow-up earlier on in order to make sure that we're watching what's happening with the cervix. Okay, so if somebody has anything, any kind of changes or maybe say a new partner in that time frame, should they then go back? Yeah, so not a new partner. Okay. Um, that wouldn't be one of the indications, but certainly a change on the pap smear okay. or on the HPV test, then you should rely on your physician to help guide you in kind of what's there and what needs to be watched. And how common is HPV? Yeah, so it's very common. Okay. So just about everybody who's had sexual intercourse will have had it unless you've been vaccinated. Wow. Okay, so it's it's everywhere and most people have had it at some point in their life but most people will clear that virus okay. it's just that we need to figure out when that virus hangs around which is why we do the screening okay and can we talk a little bit about the vaccine who should get it when they should get it how soon they should get it yeah everybody okay so everybody should get it um, essentially we want to vaccinate children and so most often that's in the pediatric visits mm -hmm. they're going to be recommending those vaccination protocols and we want everybody to be vaccinated one because everybody is at risk for these cancers it's not just women and in fact oropharyngeal cancers or head and neck cancers uh -huh. are becoming more common and again related to HPV so those definitely affect men as well and then also to make sure that we're working on getting the, rid of this virus completely and therefore getting rid of these cancers. All right. So where should people go? I see we have a website there on our screen to get more information. That's exactly right. Yep. So you can contact our office that way, find us online, and that would be the best way to do it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today thank and giving you for us all of that me. really pertinent information. Again, all the information you need there available on our screen. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.